Reviewing the menu at the Red Frog Speakeasy in Lisbon, Portugal. As the name suggests, this is a speakeasy. You have to ring a bell, you have to have a reservation. They have a very interesting system of payment where you have a little card, you get stamps and then you pay when you leave. So no one has to hand over money. Yeah. The Red Frog Speakeasy has won everything underneath the sun. Best bar in Portugal for two years in a row. Best menu in Portugal for two years in a row. So why not review the best menu in Portugal today? Starting off with first impressions. Super nice compact menu, nice and small, fits right into the palm of your hand. Clear name of the front, the logo, the infamous little red frog. All right, first page. The Modern Speakeasy, volume one. Ah, well, there you go. Uh, a little advert here. They've won everything all the time, always. Next page, we're going into what is this menu inspired by? A little, a lot of text, lots of text. House rules. We operate in closed door service mode. Ring the bell and wait, please. Well, you're not getting this menu until you've already inside. So that's a bit pointless. Prohibited to children under 18 years old. Obviously. Oh yeah. First sip. Geneva. I'm not sure anybody wants to have Geneva as their first sip. Aperitivo. Massive picture of the bottle of the brand. Bold start. Negroni style, Gimlet style, French 75 style. You're assuming that a lot of the guests know cocktail terminology. Other than that, uh, it's a nice easy layout. Four drinks on a two page spread, not bad. Shit loads of drinks on this menu. Well, that, that was first impressions. Um, this is probably the most purest cocktail bar menu I've seen. There's nothing about mixers, there's nothing about non-alcoholics, there's no beer, there's no wine, at least there's not on this menu. There's no bar food. This is it. This is a true, you know, bone dry martini cocktail bar. That's all we do. We do cocktails. Here is 50 million of them. Enjoy. Let's break it down. All right, here we are at the practical section of the menu. Now there's 37 pages in this menu. The menu weighs about 41 grams, which is about two teaspoons. We've got 47 drinks listed, so it's quite hefty. It's A5 in size, and the price is between 10 to 14 and a half euros for the cocktails. It's got eight sections in which all the drinks are listed. Overall, I find the menu to be quite compact. It's very easy to list and generally super handy. Nevertheless, I gotta do what I gotta do, and I gotta go to the pros, and I gotta go to the cons. So, let's start off with pros. I really like the layout of the drinks. You've got your name, you've got the type of style it is, you've got the name of the base spirit and the brand, then you've got all the other ingredients, a little descriptor of what the cocktail is like, price, short or long, and the ABV. Another big pro is that it's a bilingual menu. They use Portuguese and English, which means that they cover both the tourists that visit Lisbon and the locals. Bonus. Nevertheless, there's a couple of cons we need to sort of discuss. My first massive con with this menu is that they have these style descriptors. Gimlet style, Negroni style. A menu is meant to make your life easier. If you're going to put in Negroni style and that's the first question that the guest is going to ask the host, you're creating more work for yourself instead of making it easier. Con number two, there's some really, really silly ingredients listed on this menu. Like, for example, um, there is a drink where the ingredients listed are fig leaf, smoked oat, agastache, well, I don't know what the fuck that is, and clarified Ramos fizz. Just think about that. That's an ingredient. A clarified Ramos fizz is an ingredient in this cocktail. It's just, it, it doesn't make sense. Like, it doesn't make sense in Portuguese or English. How is a clarified Ramos fizz an ingredient? What are you talking about? It's just, it, that's, that's one of many examples. That's just one of many examples. I feel like they've created a layout which they're forced to stick to, but the layout does not fit their needs. Con number three, just gross ingredients. I'm sure that the bartenders here are great and I'm sure they make delicious drinks, but some ingredients just put me off cocktails. And if they put me off as a bartender who's more likely to give them a go, I can't imagine how they're gonna put off the average guest. Examples, redistilled blood sausage. Uh, durian, stinky as shit, cuttlefish, gross, and activated charcoal. Half of these drinks don't, half of these drinks don't sound appealing. 
the fuck thing about these cons is that obviously this is a good bar. It has to be. It's in one top 100 best bars in the world. It's won all these uh, awards. So it, it, I, I, everyone talks about it. It's the bar of Lisbon. But why does this sound so gross? All right, visually, there's not much going for this menu. Nevertheless, it does have some uh, one or two really good points. There's good use of the mascot at parts of the menu. They have this little nice visual where the mascot changes its background color to match the drink it's trying to promote. And then you have in between the menu, these uh, pictures of certain brands. There's not much else to really add here. So let's just move on to pros and cons. Pro number one is actually the font and the background design. The font is clear, the, the, the background is white, it's a dark bar, it makes it easier to read. And that's really it for the visuals, there's not a lot to do here. Let's move on to the cons. Con number one is their use of imagery within the menu. They've just used stock photos sent by the brand, if that, and it makes me feel like they're, all of their creativity went into the drinks. If you look right at the back, the fever tree section, the photo is actually such a low resolution that it looks horrible blown out like this. If you're one of the world's 100 best bars, you can't use images that look like they're from 1995. Nevertheless, we've uh, covered visuals and uh, let's move on to concept. This is gonna be spicy. Before I begin the conceptual section, I would just like to point out the bar is good, the design is good, the owners are nice, the bartenders have been always nice to me. Um, this is not a war against somebody. This is a really bad menu. Also, I'd like to point out that this is an old menu. This is not the 2020, 2019. Uh, this is the 2018 menu, so it is two years old. According to Red Frog, they are a modern speakeasy. Cool. According to them, the concept my best guess is they've taken classic drinks, deconstructed them, and then put them back together using modern techniques. And so if I'm to review them based on their mission statement, I guess they've definitely deconstructed them and they definitely put them back together again. I just don't think that the final result, on paper, the final result is not good. Nevertheless, let's move on to pros and cons the way I see it. Conceptually, this is a good menu from the standpoint of its size of its layout, of its mission statement. And cons, where do I start? Uh, okay, cons of this menu from a conceptual standpoint. Con number one, there's 47 drinks on this menu or covered over 37 pages. I really, really became tired of reading so much text after maybe page 20. Con number two, every single visual that you've used, the only visuals you've used, look like an advert from a stock photo for brands. Conceptual con number three. If you've decided to take classic drinks and then deconstruct them and put them together again, at least explain what those classic drinks are that you're deconstructing in the first place. As a closing statement, the best way I could describe this menu is if somebody took a word salad and a bunch of eccentric ingredients, blended it all together, but put it on a beautiful plate and really well garnished with a micro herb and a little flag that said one of the world's best bars. That would be it. It's probably the harshest review I've done and probably the worst menu I've seen in a long time. Maybe I'm setting my own bar too high because there's all of these expectations that this is one of the world's best bars. But I, if I was to pretend otherwise, that would be a disservice to everyone watching these reviews and it would be lying to the bar itself. See you next week.